giant BP has reported a huge profit for July to September this year. Oil and gas prices have been soaring, pushed upwards by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. BP making $8.2 billion in that period. That is more than double the profit over the same three months of last year. It will increase payments to its shareholders by 10%, returning billions of dollars to them. Now, all the big oil firms have announced bumper profits in the past week. Overnight, Saudi Arabia's Aramco said it had made a profit of $42.4 billion over just three months, thanks to higher commodity prices. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden has said he plans to seek tax penalties for oil companies unless they invest their record profits in lowering household costs and ramping up production. Speaking at the White House, Mr. Biden appealed to oil and gas firms to find ways to reduce costs for consumers. He accused them of war profiteering from the conflict in Ukraine and said if they did not lower prices at the pump, his administration would work with Congress to impose higher taxes on their excess profits. I have no problem with corporations turning a fair profit or getting a return on their investment in innovation. But this is remotely what's happening. Oil companies, record profits today, are not because they're doing something new or innovative. Their profits are a windfall of war. Lots to talk about with Caroline Davies, who joins us now from our business newsroom. Caroline, good to see you. Firstly, can we start with those BP profits? Can you put them into context for us? I mean, are they unprecedented? Lucy, well, in fact, the previous quarter, BP made even more profit. They made around sort of 8.4 billion pounds, a billion US dollars back then. So this is still a consistent level of profit that BP are bringing in. Of course, we saw last week that Shell were announcing uh, major profits as well. They said that they were, this was the second highest ever quarter, nearly record breaking there too. And as you mentioned, Aramco, multiple of these oil and gas giants bringing in enormous profits at the moment. Uh, and the main reason that, uh, that many politicians have started talking about windfall taxes or in some cases have brought them in is of course this underlying concern that this is not a result of, of something that those companies are doing particularly differently. It is the fact that the market conditions have changed. Now we know that the um, supply side has been one of the major impacts on this and that's because of the fact that Russia invaded Ukraine and that has led to a lot of limitations uh, in many markets around gas and oil supplies too and that has been causing major issues in the market but also uh, some level on the demand side because as the world was coming out of the pandemic, there was an increased demand for some of these energy supplies too. So that's been the source of this. But as we've seen, there's been a consistent profit over the course of this year for many of these companies bringing in large amounts of money. Yeah, and lots of calls, growing calls for windfall taxes as well, Caroline. What about for consumers? Is there any sign that energy prices are going to come down at all? Well, it's been interesting. We have seen that there's been some drop in some of the gas prices around in Europe at the moment, but that's generally been seen to be a mixture of two things. Firstly, um, many of the, the EU countries have built up a large amount of their stockpiles of gas ready for the winter, and those sort of stockpiles are about to be about sort of the storage facilities are about 93, 94% full, so not a huge amount more space to put in there. And on the other side of things, it's so far been a relatively warm winter in Europe, and so those supplies haven't been diminished by being used up. But that is all relatively short term. If suddenly the weather changes and things become a lot colder, of course those gas prices could go up again because there's more demand for it. And this is the constant cycle, it's demand and supply. So there's certain things that could affect the oil price and the gas prices. It could be, uh, it could be a warmer winter, less demand. There could be a recession, which some are suggesting could also lead to an incre uh, a decrease in demand because um, the economy contracts, there's less demand for those energy prices. But at the same time, we've got other things that are continuing to push it up like the fact that there doesn't seem to be any resolution in sight at the moment in Russia and Ukraine. So that is keeping the prices high. And of course, a large amount of this is all tied in too to the weather, whether it's a cold or a warm winter around the rest of the world. Carrie, good to see you. Thanks so much.